Okay. Cut. Um, I'm gonna put this at the beginning. There's a trigger warning for abusive relationships uh, because we will be talking about, I think, two, or maybe this is the only one, I don't know. But if you see a cut, it's because I had to put the trigger warning for abusive relationships at the beginning. Abusive relationships, anything else that may come up that I forget about, put at the beginning. Hi guys, so we're finally at the Degrassi relationships. Uh, and you know we're starting out with one through seven, so seasons one through seven. So we're getting near the end of the Degrassi series because we do relationships one through seven, eight through 14, next class, junior high and high, all separate videos that I named. And then we're ranking all the relationships and then we're done. Um, and then I move on to Nancy Drew. I hope you guys will still support me when I move on to Nancy Drew because Nancy Drew has been a part of my life since I was literally in elementary school. So. And I may, so I was talking to my boyfriend and he told me about a software that I could use to film myself while playing video games. And I was thinking if for the Nancy Drew series, maybe my sister and I could play the Nancy Drew games and you could see our reactions when we play the games. It might be really funny. So I might do that. I'll see how it goes. Uh, we probably have to use my sister's computer because my computer doesn't have a lot of storage space, but also, um, some games don't work on my computer and they still work on hers. So we might have to use uh, her computer. <clears throat> but anyway, guys, that's why she'd be included with me. So anyway, um, so let's jump into this video. I don't have any announcements. I took my finals. I'm brain dead. That's it. So let's jump into this. So we're going to start with season one of Degrassi, The Next Generation. Sean and Emma. Also, I'm not going in the order that you see them. I'm just going in the order because I had to go on a list and they had the, the relationships in alphabetical order. And then I may have gotten, this isn't even an alphabetical order, but they were kind of, there was a list that was all over the place, right? So I kind of wrote these couples down all over the place. So just bear with me. Sean and Emma. They went on a little date in the first season and from that point on they were dating um and they did break up at some point but they were cute they were like a little kid relationship like it wasn't really that serious but they were super cute and you could tell they actually really cared about each other like she was one of the only people that okay phone she was literally one of the only people that like actually cared about sean as a person and he actually really cared about her and it was sweet to see. Caitlin and Keith. Now, if you don't know who Keith is, he is the asshole that showed up to her reunion and was a director. Yeah. And then he started flirting with Allison, which is exciting. But yeah, like I definitely think Caitlin deserved better than him. I definitely think he was a scumbag and Every time he talked, I just felt so, like, so much secondhand embarrassment, so uncomfortable. Like, Jimmy and Ashley. This is another one of those, like, kid relationships, like, just starting out. Um, and it was, it was okay, but I definitely think there were some things that weren't working, and... Ashley wasn't communicating with Jimmy when like she felt suffocated and everything and that's a big problem if you feel like you can't communicate with your partner because that's an issue because communication is one of the most important things in a relationship. So I just feel like they weren't meant to be together at that point because it they weren't communicating. Season 2. Snake and Spike. I love Snake and Spike. I've loved them as far back as Degrassi High when she got a crush on him. I have loved Snake and Spike since that point and I just, I absolutely love them. They're so sweet. 
by the way, I forgot to mention this with that. Um, I only went with couples that have dated or were big in storylines. So like School's Out, I talk about Joey and Tessa because it's important. But like most of the time, if it was like a short fling or if it was just a crush, I don't talk about it. I just talk about relationships. So letting you letting you know that but because in schools out they do mention that he's dating tessa that's why i included it anyway back in yeah snake and spike i love that they get married i love that they end up together and it just it seems like a really healthy relationship between those two what happened in season five never should have happened it was so out of character for snake i'm just gonna put that just gonna put that out there Sean and Emma, they get back together. Um, and, you know, I, I really liked Sean and Emma because, like I said, they had that, like, they had that type of relationship that was just, like, it worked so well. Like, the bad guy and the good girl. It just worked so well. The bad boy and the good girl. It worked so well, and they really showed it in a healthy way. I know sometimes Degrassi shows it in an unhealthy way, <laughs> Craig and Manny. Um, but I think, well, she's not really, she was, you know what I mean. Anyway, Darcy and Spinner is a better um, indication. But you know, it's just, it just worked so well and their personalities complemented each other so well. And they really, really liked each other. And when he showed up to Snake and Spike's wedding, I just, it, it, it just, mm. Ashley and Craig. So Ashley and Craig was a dumpster fire <laughs> waiting to happen. You see it at the beginning, you think it's fine, and then you realize it's a dumpster fire. They're both hot messes. They should have never gotten into a relationship together. It just didn't work. I think that um, Craig had his fair share of problems. Ashley had her fair share of problems, and to put them together in a relationship just didn't seem like the smartest idea because they just really didn't compliment each other. It really just didn't work. Jimmy and Ashley. This was a dumpster fire waiting to happen also because this relationship was also god awful. Like she literally changed her whole image and you could tell that Jimmy just didn't like her new image. Jimmy wasn't into it. And I feel like that should have been an indication. Like he's like, oh, I like you, but I don't like the new you and Jimmy just didn't want to say it but it was so clear that he did not like her new image it was painfully obvious and I felt so bad for her because he's literally just like not liking her new appearance but he should like her and you know that whole thing Marco and Ellie it was cute that Ellie's crush liked her back until you find out that, you know, Marco is gay. Um, but I think Ellie was still so sweet to him and she was, she was offering to be his shield for a little bit until she's like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. You, you have to tell people, you know, but I think it was a really sweet relationship because Ellie was so supportive of Marco still, and she was so sweet to him and they were so sweet to each other and that was that was nice spinner and page i'm actually one of those people that like spinner and page i like the way that they interact with each other i'm one of those few people that likes the relationship because i feel like it was really good for spinner to be with page and i feel like it was really good for page as well like i feel like they just kind of complimented each other and they helped each other you know, learn different things. And he was there for her during her trial and everything. And I feel like, you know, like they just supported each other through like a lot of, of things. And he was always there for her. Toby and Kendra. Now I know, you know, all you all know who Kendra is because you're mad she got black hole just as much as I am. Toby and Kendra were cute. Toby was a little bit much. I think, you know, he didn't really know how to act in a relationship, you know, because it was new to him. But you could tell he really liked Kendra and you could tell it was just super sweet between the two of them. So I'm going to give it my seal of approval. Sean and Emma, this is where they end for the second time. Yeah, season three starts to be a little bit of a 
of a rat's nest for everybody because you know Sean starts hanging out with Jay and all of them and so his personality starts to change and he became really disrespectful to Emma he just became like a really rude mean person like it was just disgusting to see that transformation. Ashley and Craig, they ended. Um, yeah, like I said, it was a dumpster fire waiting to happen. It, it wasn't gonna last. Like, I don't know why he thought it was gonna last. I think this is also where he's cheating on Ashley. So why did you think it would... Excuse me. Manny and Craig, they start and you know end pretty quickly um manny and craig never should have happened in my opinion that should have never been a thing because why why would you do that when you know that you are with somebody why would you cheat on them with somebody else and then knowing that they're with somebody why would you help them to cheat on their partner like it goes to manny and craig like they're both in the wrong here and yes craig is more in the wrong for still basically taking advantage of her because she you know thought he liked her realized he never liked her that's a shitty thing but it's also shitty for you to hook up with him when you know he's with ashley like that's also a shitty thing so it's like you're both doing the shitty thing and then the second time Manny and Craig get together and break up pretty quickly. Um, again, why did it happen? Well, it's because she's pregnant. But like, you know, why? 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 You know? Chris and Emma. I feel bad because Chris got black holed after this. But Chris and Emma didn't have an awful relationship he was very sweet to her and he just wanted to have a relationship with her and he just wanted to get to know her and date her and he was even asking her about her environmental club he wanted to know what she was interested in and him coming over for snake's birthday like would she invite him over for some cake that was sweet but it was like you know i i feel like she took chris for granted and that makes me really mad because there's this guy that actually genuinely likes you and wants to get to know you and you're just not even. JT and Manny. I think I'm one of the people that I actually liked JT and Manny at the beginning because he really liked her and he really stood up for her and was there for her. And I feel like, you know, like she, she started taking him for granted. Not yet, but... I feel like JT and Manny were really a good match for each other and they were really good for each other. Jay and Alex. Jay and Alex were just a complete hot mess together. I could see how toxic they were. Um, even when they didn't really have speaking lines, I could see how toxic they were and it was just a complete mess. Jimmy and Hazel. I liked Jimmy and Hazel. I thought they complemented each other well. I thought they worked really well together. Hazel was probably one of Jimmy's best relationships on the show, I will say. But yeah, I like Jimmy and Hazel. <clears throat> Joey and Caitlin. So y'all know I love Joey and Caitlin on this channel. And I really thought that they were going to work out this time. I really thought that they were going to get together and stay together and work out great. And obviously that didn't happen. But I really wish it would have because they really complement each other well. And they really picked up right where they left off and he apologized and it was it was nice. Joey and Sydney. I hate Sydney. Let's just get that out right now. I felt I felt like she was stuck up and I felt like she didn't really care about Joey as much as she cared about the image of being with Joey. And yeah, she cared about the kids, but like where does that where does that like, you know, people want you to care about them and their kids, but it seemed like she never really cared about Joey as much as, you know, and she was always like shitty to Caitlyn. Like, why are you going to be shitty to your partner's friends? Like, that's, that's not, you know. Liberty and Towers. I think that's how his name's pronounced. Um, she dated him. He was part of Jay's crew and then he got black holed after Liberty and him broke up. 
Uh, they were actually really cute. The thing that Towers had a thing for smart girls and he liked the way that she said certain words and he found her really cute and Sean set them up. I think that was super sweet because it was super sweet to see that Liberty had somebody that had a crush on her when she was so down on herself all the time for nobody liking her. And I think that was super sweet. Manny and Sully. This was a hot mess. If you don't know who Sully is, he was that like soccer player that Manny changed her image for. Sully was a piece of shit. Like I just think like he didn't really care about Manny at all. He just liked the new clothes she was wearing like every other guy in the school. And I just feel like he wasn't a good match for her. Marco and Dylan. So I end up liking Marco and Dylan, but right now I feel like, you know, they were trying and they were cute, but I feel like we should have waited till Marco got a little bit older because I think Marco didn't really like, there was just, they, they didn't really have room to grow and thrive in this relationship yet. I think when Marco's older is when we really see them start to like grow and thrive. Marco and Ellie, this is where they break up. But yeah, and, and, and like I said, Ellie was still sweet to Marco. Sean and Amy. I feel like this is something that should have never happened. It didn't really serve any purpose. It showed that Sean changed, but didn't really serve any purpose. Sean and Ellie. So a lot of people like Sean and Ellie, and I'm not gonna say that Sean and Ellie were bad because they did have a few good moments where he liked her for her and he was very sweet to her and he was super supportive of her and like he really was there for her. But I feel like there were a few moments that maybe were not the best um and it seemed like he could never really talk to her about his problems and I feel like that's something that when you're in a relationship that's something that you feel like you can do and for him to not feel like he could talk to his partner about what's going on in his life is kind of not good because you know you should feel like you could talk to your partner about things Terry and Rick so obviously this is a awful relationship um there's a lot going on in this relationship i'm not gonna say anything um okay so guys we're back if you saw a jump cut it's because i forgot to put trigger warning at the beginning you guys know how this works anyway so terry and rick obviously you know what happened between terry and rick if you watch the show and i don't really want to get into it but that was just an awful relationship and if you know you know Ashley and Craig, they start up again in season four. And every time Ashley and Craig start up, it's a hot mess that's just waiting to end. And, you know, this is just not, not it. It's just not it. And it's just not going to end well. JT and Liberty, this is when they start the first time they dated. And honestly, they were the sweetest things. Like the fact that Liberty liked JT for so long and then he finally started to like her back. It was just something that was like full circle, so sweet. And I really wish they would have lasted the full test of time. JT and Manny, they break up obviously because, you know, it wasn't working. And I think it just kind of ran its course. Uh, it was cute, but also I think she was like way too obsessed with Craig to really like realize that she had a good guy right in front of her. But... Yeah, it just ran its course, in my opinion. Jay and Alex, they broke up, which was fantastic. It's not fantastic the reason why they broke up, because I definitely feel bad for Alex in that regard. But they broke up, and I think it was good for Alex to get herself out of that relationship. Joey and Caitlin, this is when they end. And it really upset me that they ended, because I wanted them to get married. I wanted them to, you know, rekindle the relationship, but it just wasn't in the cards, I guess. Marco and Dylan. So they end and then they get back together and end. I think this is where Marco cheats. Uh, I mean, um, Dylan cheats on Marco. That's what I meant. And that was shitty. That should have never happened. But I could definitely see why Marco and Dylan weren't suited until they got older. Because if you're going to cheat on Marco, obviously you don't love him. And I think they needed that time apart to then be able to come together later. Paige and Matt. 
I don't know why everybody thought this was something to be glamorized. It wasn't. She was with a student teacher. He's a creep because he's dating a student, which don't even get me started on that. Sean and Ellie, this is where they break up and Sean, you know, um, and I think they were good to break up because I feel like, like the relationship just didn't like, it was cute when it first started, but it just seemed like it was falling apart after what had happened happened, it, you know, and Ellie, Ellie was in the right. She was the supportive girlfriend trying to help him. And she was in the right for that. But Sean just didn't want to whatever. And I think he needs some time at home. Spinner and Manny. I don't even know why this happened. Because it didn't seem like either of them were fully into each other. And it just seemed like it wasn't, it wasn't working. Spinner and Paige, they end and then they get back together. And I really like Spinner and Paige. Like I said, I think they really complement each other and they really help each other through so many things. Toby and Kendra, they end up breaking up. I don't know if we find out the actual reason. And if we do, I just don't remember. Season five, Snake and Spike, they make up after the storyline that should have never happened. And like I said, I don't really have more to say. That storyline should have never happened. They should have been together and there shouldn't have been a cheating storyline. Ashley and Alistair. Now that was like not very long. She was in England at this point. So I think that like she, I don't know if she broke up with Craig before going to England. You can refresh my memory whether she did or didn't. But I feel like, you know, dating somebody See, I was never really, um, I never really paid attention to her starting to date Alistair because I think that she, yes, yeah, so she was, oh, so she broke up with Craig the same episode that it was revealed that she got with Alistair. Okay. Okay. But then he found out that she broke up by getting with Alistair. Okay. So yeah, well, we never knew anything really about Alistair either, so. Ashley and Craig, obviously, like I said, ending, which I think was good. I don't think they should have been together. Manny and Craig, they start again. If it didn't work the first time, why was it going to work the second time? This is something that I don't understand about Manny and Craig. They keep trying to give each other chances and it keeps ending horribly. Just, just going to put that there. JT and Liberty. I'm glad that, well, they ended, which wasn't great and then they started up again and I think JT and Liberty should have stayed together JT and Liberty remind me a lot of Cam and Maya uh because they were so pure and they were so good for each other Jimmy and Ashley so they start for a fourth time now I actually like Jimmy and Ashley when they're older at this point I like them because I feel like they really work now that they're older. The only thing I don't like about it is Ashley deleting Jimmy off the track because that was shitty whenever that happens because I can't exactly remember when that happens. But I think in a relationship sense, they did work together. Jimmy and Hazel obviously had to end for that to happen later. So Jimmy and Hazel ended and I was really upset about it because you know, I really liked them together, but I think the relationship had just run its course again. Joey and Diane. I don't like Diane. I don't like her, and I don't like the fact that they probably got married. Um, I just don't like Diane. She just seems, like, way too young for Joey, and I know that, like, I shouldn't judge ages in a relationship. Like, who am I to judge that? But there just felt like something off about it. Marco and Dylan. So this is the third time they started and I really, really liked Marco and Dylan because I felt like they finally grew up and they finally understood like everything. But of course it does end because there's Marco and Tim. And before Marco and Dylan started, Marco and Tim and Tim was just a rebound for Marco. And I feel really bad for Tim because he really looked up to Marco and he really liked Marco and then he got completely used. 
Paige and Alex. This is where they date for the first time. And I think Paige and Alex were a really good match because Alex really liked her. Paige was trying to figure it out. And Alex was really supportive of Paige trying to figure it out. Paige and Matt. Obviously, they end. And I just feel like like it shouldn't have worked in the first place because he and then he literally just dumped her and gave her pot like what um peter and emma what more can i say about peter and emma he helped her through her recovery and they were good until Sean showed up again. And then they fell apart. Spinner and Darcy. The first and second time they dated. Uh, Spinner and Darcy, I think, were an interesting concept. But I think they weren't going to work in the long run. But they definitely taught each other important lessons. Like with the internet and her My Room page and the pictures and... You know, I think Spinner, you know, taught her it's like, it's on the internet, Darcy. That's not all they're doing, Darcy. Like, they're just looking. And he's like, that's not all they're doing. And I think it's really good that they had that kind of relationship. But anyway, Alex and Carla. Now, if you don't know who Carla is, she was the track star from college. And I really think that, I really feel bad for Carla because she was only there to really like try to get a rise out of Paige and Alex was kind of using her and I feel really really like that makes me feel really bad for her. Sean and Emma they start again and I feel like Sean and Emma at this point were really good because you know she just didn't want to tell him something because she didn't want his image of her to change but Sean's image of her wasn't going to change he was going to get mad at Jay. But then him and Emma had to have that talk that I can't be perfect. And they really, once they had that talk, everything was kind of just laid out there. And it was, it was good from that point on. Manny and Craig, they end in this season because I guess they had gotten back together and I forgot to write it. Uh, I think this is when Craig was doing his coke. Yes. This is when Craig was doing coke and he chose that over Manny and he wasn't trying to get help. And Manny was like, you need to get help. You can't be doing this. And I feel like Manny had her head screwed on straight. And so I feel like that that relationship just wasn't going to work with that bit thrown in. Manny and Damien. Manny and Damien, I don't think it was something that should have happened because they just didn't seem well suited for each other. It just seemed kind of rushed. It seemed like it didn't really have time to grow or anything. And I just don't like Damien. So... Ellie and Jesse. Ellie and Jesse should have never happened. Like, I'm sorry, but anybody who supports Ellie and Jesse, I, I can't. I don't know why you do. Because the way he called her Frosh always made my skin crawl. And I just, Jesse's such a, like, Ellie deserves better than Jesse. JT and Mia. I didn't totally hate JT and Mia. Um, but I don't think they were a perfect relationship for each other. Um... But I didn't hate JT and Mia. It was really cute how much he cared for Isabella. And it was really cute how much he cared for her in general. But, you know, I don't think it was the best relationship. Jay and Mel. So that was the one that worked at, like, that stripper bar. And she was just a waitress. And, you know, I, I liked how, like, her friendship with Alex mostly but we didn't really see her and Jay a lot. So I guess their relationship was fine. Um, Lucas and Mia. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for saying this, but I wanted Lucas and Mia to work out just for Isabella's sake because he really wanted to be involved with Isabella and he really wanted to like, you know, be there for her at first. And I really wanted them to work out for that sake. But of course, they, it wasn't in the cards. And I'm just really upset that he went back to being a shithead. Paige and Alex, this is when they start for a second time. And I really feel like it was good and they probably should have stayed together. But then, of course, Alex wasn't putting in the effort to keep it 
you know, going, she wasn't being supportive of Paige and her new job and all that. Paige and Jesse. That should have never been a thing. I don't know why it was a thing. It was disgusting. Peter and Darcy. I feel like Peter and Darcy really were good for each other, really complimented each other well, completely just like understood each other. And Peter helped Darcy through one of the hardest points in her life. And it was just, I feel like they were meant to be. Peter and Emma, they ended obviously. And I feel like it was good for them to end because they didn't really have much of a, you know, much of a connection. Spinner and Darcy. Spinner and Darcy are interesting people, honestly. I just, this was the whole My Room page thing. I was one season behind, but yeah, it just seemed like she never really was truly with him when she was with him, if that makes sense. And Spinner and Paige, they had that little uh, hooking up thing. Uh... You know, and I, I, I was kind of upset when Paige was like, oh, it was nothing. And Spinner thought it was more. And, you know, it, it was like, you probably should have let him know you weren't looking for, you know, a relationship with him again. But season seven. This is the last season that we have for today. Sean and Emma, they end again. And I was really upset about this one more than any others because I feel like at this point they really understood each other and really complimented each other. Emma and Damien, I don't think this ever should have happened because why? Like, okay, they kind of had things in common, but not really. And like right after he broke up with Manny, Emma, is she single? Like, ew. Manny and Damien. Yep, only one episode. They decided to give it a try again. It didn't work. And uh, yeah. Sorry guys, my foot fell asleep. So if you see me making weird faces, that's why. Danny and Rachel. If you don't remember who Rachel is, she was that girl from like Lakers that Danny and Derek were like obsessed with. Um, yeah, Danny and Rachel could have been cute if it was done the right way, but it was just so rushed and it was just like, not it because she was not it. Ellie and Jesse, they end and thank God because that was a mess and he cheated on her with Caitlin. So there's just a whole different Jay and Manny. I loved Jay and Manny. I feel like he really cared about her. I love how he called her dimples, but like it seemed like he really cared about her. And like, you know, it was so, so sweet to, it was so, so sweet. I just, I love Jay and Manny. Jay and Mel obviously broke up, you know. Jimmy and Ashley, they ended because we'll go right into Jimmy met Trina. I hated Jimmy and Trina. I felt like she was always like forcing him to do things. It was never really truly supportive of his decision. And you know, it just, it upset me, but yeah. Marco and Dylan and they ended and you know, I, I like, I didn't think it was going to work because he was going to Switzerland, but you know, Marco and Eric. I feel bad for Eric because I know that Eric was taken for granted, but you know. Paige and Alex, and this is the second time they end and I knew this relationship wasn't working out. You could just tell that like their hearts weren't in it anymore and they just weren't for each other anymore. Paige and Griffin. I liked Paige and Griffin. I think they complimented each other really well and I think that, you know, Paige was really understanding about him once they had that talk at night. And we're able to see each other's point of view. Darcy. Peter and Darcy. They ended, yes, but then they came back together. And I just, I really think that they deserve to be together for the long run. Sav and Anya. They start here. And Sav and Anya are cute when they first start. Like, I don't see any issue with it. It's super, super cute. And Spinner and Jane. They start, and I think Spinner and Jane were really, really good together. Now, obviously, those relationships that just started in the next few seasons, like the next video next weekend, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of those. 
but those are the earlier relationships. So tell me what you think below in the comments. If you have differing views, of course, I respect all views. I respect all opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what relationship you're excited for us to dive into next week. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.